Yeah, so, and, and we have econometric paper that is also uh, related and that's, that's more about um, kind of, you know, how to characterize the bias. Uh-huh. You know, that- uh, Associated so with the matching? How, how to, right. Oh, right. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so if, because if you have experimental data, mm -hmm. you can, um, you can characterize the bias, right? Selection bias. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's in the econometric paper. Oh, interesting. You know, that reminds me of that Abadie and Imben's paper uh -huh. uh, where they, their matching paper, where they also characterized the selection bias with matching. Was that yeah, similar? Did, that was similar, similar to, idea. Yes. Oh, it was yes. a similar idea. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's interesting. Uh, the, um, the 97 restud, uh, and, mm -hmm. and I'm just curious, I had never seen this before. And I guess this is a uh, related to the unconfoundedness assumption where, mm -hmm. um, you know, if the treatment is conditionally random, then you can use the control group to impute the Y zero potential outcome. And then mm -hmm. you, you, can, you can estimate that potential outcome using just mm -hmm. the control group. And then you can do the same for the treatment group. And, yeah. you know, Abity and Embens do that with their matching framework, but you sort of do that in that diff and diff framework with the, um, yeah. with that's not really based on conditional randomization. It's based on a parallel trends type assumption. Is that right? right. That's right. Yeah. So how did you, how I'd never seen anybody do that kind of, well, I mean, I, you know, I obviously wasn't in 97 doing stuff, but like I, as I've kind of like tried to go backwards and figure mm -hmm. out this whole imputing, looking at a relationship in one group and then knowing that that would therefore allow you in the other group. Mm -hmm. How did that idea come about to you guys? That kind of outcome regression, use the control group and then impute the treatment group Y0. I think it's kind of a match, you know, if you think about where difference and difference idea yeah. comes from in a non metric sense, I think it's a very natural idea to, yeah, so. Because it's that parallel trends assumption? Right, right. right. It, you know, if you, if you think about what the parallel trend is in a non-parametric sense, it will be like that, right? So. Yeah. Was that your idea? Who's, who, how did that idea come about? I think it's Jim's idea, actually. Jim had the idea? Yeah, yeah. Ha, was, is that, is that kind of a thing that's really common in econometrics? Like you'll, you know, it's not like original to that 97, you got you guys that's like a trick that's done every now and then no i i think i think that no yeah i mean you know jim is really uh good in abstracting the core idea um and that's where i think um yeah i mean that's one of the, the a very nice idea that jim had i think um yeah mm -hmm. That idea is getting new life right now with these new oh, yeah. papers. <laughs> no, I noticed, yeah. You've yeah. noticed that with this yeah. Borsak uh, et al. paper, uh, that's what yeah. they do. And, you know, this paper of yours is getting new life again with the doubly robust uh, paper by Pedro Santana and Zhao, as well as this Callaway and Santana paper. Uh -huh. They both in their R code specify that you can use the, uh, your, um, your outcome regression approach. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's really, it's really neat. So I've been like studying it a lot more uh, mm -hmm. than ever. And all these little bitty details like that have just kind of been mm -hmm. so intriguing. Um, so did, 